san konnichiwa. My name is uh, Yoshi Domoto. I'm the executive director of the Japan American Society of Georgia. And so thrilled that you are joining us today for another edition of Ouchi Gohan, our Japanese home cooking with Table for Two in Atlanta, Boston, and Houston. Uh, thank you very much to all of our partners, uh, of course, Table for Two and Washoku Iku, uh, the Japan American Society of Houston, and the Japan Society of Boston. Uh, we are so thrilled and we are always lucky to have such a, a wonderful group uh, each and every month uh, with, with Ochi Gohan series. Um, and uh, this month we have Chan Chan Yaki, uh, which is uh, steamed salmon and veggies uh, blanketed in rich, savory miso butter sauce. Um, a miso butter salmon or Chan Chan Yaki is um, um, hopefully will be an easy Japanese uh, comfort food hailing from the northern region of uh, Ishikari in Hokkaido, Japan. So. Uh, should be a uh, uh, we should be in, a, in for a very um, delicious treat to this evening. But without further ado, wanted to introduce our chef and sensei, Chef Deborah Sensei. Sore dewa yoroshiku onegaishimasu. All it's all yours. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming on a Saturday afternoon. Um, I'm Deborah Samuels, and I'm here in Boston, Massachusetts, and. Uh, my home Japan Society is the Japan Society of Boston. Hello, Naoko-san from Boston. Um, welcome everybody. Has, is anybody joining for the first time? Is there anybody? Ah, Kimie-san, okay, great, hello. So um, just to let you know how the program goes, uh, for the first 10 or 12 minutes, I do a short PowerPoint presentation uh, talking to you about what we're going to be making today and a little bit about Table for Two, the organization that I'm with. And then um, we get right to the cooking. And um, afterwards, any questions or comments, you know, that we have time for. So um, I just want to know how many people are cooking along with me today? You can raise your hand if you're cooking. All right, and I want to make sure everyone has Miriam is going to be with us. Adrian, I don't see you, but I'm thinking, are you cooking with us? Or are you going to? Uh, today, I'm not cooking with you. OK. I did all my. What? I'm watching. I'm watching. watching. I did all my I did all my Easter cooking today, so I'm tired. OK, <laughs> I don't blame you. All right, so um, anybody who's cooking along with me, I hope that you have all of your ingredients with you. Um, if anybody does not want to use sake, you can use white wine or you don't need to use it at all. Um, and if you have mirin, that's great. Sophie, do you have mirin? Have you got, yes, OK, <laughs> all right, great. Um, and I'm looking at other people and I'm thinking that they probably have that. And we are going to be using um, skinless or bone, boneless salmon fillets. I've got a little bit more than a half pound here today. Mine had skin on the bottom and I removed the skin. And the only reason I removed the skin, you don't have to if you don't want to, but the salmon fillet is going to lay on top of the vegetables. So I think it's probably a little bit better if you do remove the skin. It's not difficult to do. You can do it um, a little bit later as we go along. Um, but that's what we have today. And then we're also going to be making a great uh, snack, uh, which is, of course, everybody knows edamame. And they're just fun to eat. But today, they're going to be double fun to eat because we're going to be making them um, to be savory and a little spicy. Um, and they are great with uh, beer, sake, or tea, if anybody is interested. This is a family program, so we're not promoting beer, but uh, it is how it's um, eaten in Japan. Okay, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to share my screen well, for the um, PowerPoint presentation, and we will get started. Can everybody see that? Yes, okay. So today, um, this is the second part of our part two of Ouchi Gohan series. Um, and we are making chan chan yaki, uh, which as Yoshi said, is a 
dish that is um, coming from Hokkaido. Hokkaido is very famous for both salmon and miso. And um, I think I read that this had been made in large cast iron um, skillets or pots. And when you would hear the uh, spatula hitting it, it would be like chang, chang, chang. And I think that's where it got its name from. Um, so today I really loved it. It is a simple dish. Um, it's not complicated at all. And um, I think it's got so much surprising flavor to it uh, from the salmon, from the miso, and from the cabbage and mushrooms. Mushrooms are full of umami and uh, they really help to flavor the dish. And I think that you'll see that we'll be steaming that today. All right. So for those of you who are new, um, I am from Table for Two. This is a, a nonprofit organization that started in Japan and it tackles uh, the global food imbalance where in the world, the population of 7 billion people, some people have not enough to eat and some people are in hunger and food insecurity. And so our program um, works to try to correct that balance in a variety of ways. Um, we teach healthy eating and promote, uh, promote healthy eating uh, through Japanese um, cuisine, um, one of the healthiest cuisines on the planet. And um, as is evidence in the long life that people have um, in Japan. And we also do school meals. We provide school meals to children in various parts of the world, in Africa, in the US, um, in Southeast Asia. Uh, through several programs that we do. Um, we have created a Japanese-inspired food education program called Wa Shoku Iku, combination of two Japanese words, Wa Shoku, Japanese food, and Shoku Iku, which is food education, and has been the inspiration for teaching um, nutrition and food ways and cooking uh, to children. So this is what we based our program on. Um, we teach all sorts of different things in, the, in classrooms, um, in virtual classrooms, and these are some of the subjects that we work with, uh, rice, food from the sea, and we tend to concentrate on one subject for each class. Uh, lesson three, soy products, which is what we are going to be um, focusing on today. We also teach about Japanese culinary concepts and uh, food philosophies, five colors, balanced meal, itadakimasu, kancha, and appreciation, harahachibume, which I know I'm told a lot of grandmothers would tell their granddaughters, you eat until you're 80% full, but that's sort of about portion for us and motainai, do not waste. So that, these are some of the concepts that we teach. From March 15th to June 4th, we have our Edamame Champ program, um, which this uh, today's class kind of fits in with that because we're working with miso. We do chopstick challenges in school. We teach about soy. And um, for everybody that participates in the program, which is all of you today, um, one uh, food education class is donated by our sponsors. So today is double good for you. We also have a soy photo challenge. So at the end of today, if you wouldn't mind taking a picture of your chan chan yaki and uploading it to your soy, um, to your social media, uh, hashtag Edamame Champ, that would be great. So uh, these are just some of the kind of pictures that we, we have posted and people have posted online. And so let's talk a little bit about soy. Um, and edamame. So the green pods are the edamame, and they are baby soy. They're the young, immature plant at about two months old. And these are edible in this state once they're cooked. The other is also soy, which is daizu. Let me just, I think we've got the names coming up. Soybeans are edamame, 
and soybeans are both daizu. They are both soy. The daizu is the dried soybean, which is what is manufactured to make all these different soy products. So soy, as we know, is a very healthy meat alternative. Uh, it's delicious. Uh, you can use it for all sorts of things in savory dishes. If anybody is um, also from, from Japan and knows zunda, which is the edamame, um, which is the sweet wagashi that's made out of mashed edamame and sugar. So there's so many different things you can do with the fresh edamame as well. Um, so here, some soy products, some of the things that are made from soy, soybean oil, soy milk, soy sauce, miso, which is what we'll be using today. And we'll talk just a little bit about the different kinds of miso, tofu, <gasps> and natto. How many people are fans of natto here? I know, Ikuyo is going, no, no, no. Um, Yoshi likes it. Um, it is also a soybean, it's fermented soybean um, that uh, is very sticky and it's those sticky threads that, uh, and it's fermented where all that wonderful nutrition is. Um, so some people don't like the texture and have a little bit of objection to the smell, but it is one of the most healthy foods you can eat, very often eaten with rice uh, for breakfast and put in, um, put in uh, sushi, put in all kinds of things. So here's our edamame grown in giant fields. Um, and you can see it on a stalk. And here's the fresh, and then here is the dried. So question for you, who is the largest producers of soy bean in the world? You can unmute yourself, take a wild guess. Anybody wanna guess? USA. USA, China. that is a very good guess. Anybody else China. want to guess? China, pardon? China. China, another good guess, but it is Brazil, number one, and USA, number two. Two years ago, that was reversed. Um, and so we produce a lot of soybeans here. And what do we do with them? You know, so the soybeans are here mostly in the upper Midwest um, and also in Arkansas, a couple of other uh, southern states as well, giant soybean farms. And we export, how much of our soybean do we export? 60% is exported, goes around the world, goes to Japan, goes to China, um, goes all over the world. And so a lot of the soy products and one of the largest soy producers, soybean um, factories is in Wisconsin fields and Kikoman produces a lot of their soy uh, sauce, uh, certainly for the US in Wisconsin. Um, we export about 60%, whoops. I just wanted to um, go back for one second. But what Americans very often do with it is use it for, for making oil and feeding animals. It was not really considered a food that we would eat um, until recently. All right, soy is called meat of the fields um, because it is a um, plant-based protein and is very often what um, vegans will eat uh, instead of meat. Okay, um, just a little bit of the um, history of soybeans coming introduced from China to Japan. I won't go through this whole thing. I'm just going to quickly go through it. Um, Shojin Ryori is one of the ways that soy um, fermentation was um, developed. Shojin Ryori is a Japanese vegetarian cuisine and very often eaten by the monks in the Buddhist temples. Um, I guess in the Edo period, um, tofu hyaku, hyakuchi, a um, hundred recipes used with tofu. So these things are also, and a lot of the tofu also came out of China. Um, 
we learned that Benjamin Franklin in the 1760s was the first to document tofu and learned about it in London. Not quite sure how that happened, but uh, soybeans came to the US um, through a rescued Japanese fisherman um, to Illinois. And that is where our soybean production started. And the US became the number one producer in the very early part of the 1900s. Um, and tofu, which was considered hippie food back in the 1960s and 70s, um, you know, started to spread throughout America. Um, used to be you could only get domestically made, American domestically made tofu, which I think is a rather terrible product. You know, nasoya, it really put people off to soy, um, to tofu. But now you can get house brand in a lot of different places and people know different ways of using this. Whoops, back there. And um, the FDA has also um, lauded soy food as one of the healthiest foods that you can eat. All right, we're gonna get started on our cooking demonstration. Um, we are making chan chan yaki today, as you can see. It is salmon covered with a miso glaze and some butter. Miso and butter, soy sauce and butter are really two wonderful companions, really add a lot. Um, and I just wanna talk quickly about miso. Um, a lot of people ask why are the different colors? Um, when do you use white, brown, you know, shiro, aka, awase, miso? Um, it's kind of confusing, I think, for Americans that are used to having miso soup at a sushi restaurant, they're used to the white, the shiro miso. It's the mildest of all, um, all misos. And that is the shortest fermentation with the least amount of salt. The longer the fermentation, the darker the bean and the saltier, and I don't know, some people use the word funky, you know, um, taste that you you get from it. Um, but generally speaking, you can use them interchangeably. Um, brown awase miso, a combination of red and white is what is sort of a multi-purpose one. You can make miso soup, you can make sauces, you can do all sorts of things with it. And um, the sauce that we're going to be making tonight today is kind of like a dengaku miso, excuse me, which is a sweet um, miso-based soy sauce. All right, miso and dashi. Uh, now you can buy these very easy ones because usually when you make miso soup, you have a soup base of dashi, which is um, made with um, uh, katsuo boshi, which is the uh, fish and um, has a very distinctive flavor, usually making two different kinds, um, but you can buy these products very easily in the market now. Uh, one other thing that I will show you later, um, miso is used straight as a raw dip with cabbage. You just take your cabbage, dip it in the miso. If anybody's been to an izakaya, this is one of the first things that they give you. So there we are. I think we are now ready to cook. Food allergies, everybody knows their own body. And hopefully you're, if you needed to substitute anything, um, that was be done ahead of time. Well, let me see. Whoops, we're not quite at itadakimasu yet, but I'm gonna stop my share. So we are now going to get ready to cook. Does anybody have any questions? about the ingredients or preparation yet? No, all right. Now I'm gonna switch my camera uh, down to the uh, cooking area and we will get started. All right. So here are my pieces of salmon. I'm using um, skinless salmon. I took the skin off of mine. So um, one of the reasons that I've done that is because the salmon is going to lay directly on top of the vegetables. And I wanted um, to not have anything in it. Usually I leave salmon skin on when I'm cooking because that's where the fat is. And that is really delicious. So to prepare our salmon, all you need to do is take a little bit of salt, 
and sprinkle it on your salmon. I'm gonna leave it for about 10 minutes. Uh, some people also will use sake, put a little bit of sake on it um, just to kind of reduce the fishy uh, smell. So I have some sake here and I'm just going to put a little bit on um, very easily here like that. And I'm going to set that aside. So is everybody with me on that? All right. Very good. So I'm going to take my set it aside in room temperature or should we um, temperature. you don't we're going, to, we're going to cook it right away. So you do not have to put it um, in back in the refrigerator. Okay, it's actually good to take the salmon out of the refrigerator about 10 minutes before we're ready to, uh, to cook it. So I'm just gonna put that on the side. Right. And I'm going to get my vegetables all ready here. So what we have, I have my cabbage leaves all ready here. I took them off of uh, the cabbage. Does everybody have their cabbage leaves ready? Just want to make sure you've got that. I, I picked a flat cabbage today and it was, I took the core out and then I was able to kind of ease off these leaves. It doesn't matter if they break because we're going to chop them up. It was just more of a way of telling you how much to have. So I took my salmon leaves here and also I have sliced, oops, so I'll make sure this is not, the leg is not too much there. I sliced my half of an onion. You can use this if you want. If you prefer not to use onion, you don't have to. And I have my little basket of mushrooms here. So I have fresh shiitake mushrooms and I have the shimeji or birch mushrooms. I've been avoiding buying them recently because they've become so crazy expensive. But once in a while, I will splurge. And if you don't have either of those, you could use a portobello mushroom, you can use a white mushroom, any, any kind of mushroom that you would like. And I also have a half a cup of corn, frozen corn kernels. Okay. Um, important piece of equipment here is your foil. Uh, you can either cook your pieces separately for individual servings because a lot of times you will serve this um, in the foil packet or you can cook it all at once if you're just cooking two pieces. All right, so let's get started cutting up the cabbage. And what you're going to do is, you know, I washed my leaves and I'm just going to remove the stem right here like that, but I'm not throwing it away. Multi and I, let's hang on to this. And let's get these all ready, but you want this stem separated from the leaf like that, okay? And just do that with your four pieces. Okay, these are big pieces. You could also, if you wanted to, you could have used some shredded cabbage that you that you purchased, but it will disappear a little bit if you're cooking it. So I'm just getting my cabbage leaves ready like this. And anything that's got that hard stem, you're just going to remove like that. Okay. Everybody with me and can see. Just there we go. And my last one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the pieces up into about two inch size like that. Okay. Everybody with me? Cabbage is incredibly sweet when you eat it um, raw. It's really quite, uh, 
quite delicious. And that's why it's very often used as a bar snack. And so I'm just stacking my leaves like this and cutting them down. Um, has anyone in uh, the class, has anyone ever made this dish before or heard of this dish before? You can unmute yourself and let me know. Anyone heard of it? Okay. I'm glad to be introducing something even to our Japanese members. Okay. And just cutting this up like that. Okay. And what you're going to do, just make sure that stem is gone because it could be annoying when you eat it. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to cut that up too. And I'm just gonna cut these. And very often when I'm cutting things flat, I will stack them like this. I'll cut the leaf in half and then I'll stack. Not too much, there we go. And so I've got my pile growing over here. And now those pieces, the veins that you cut out, what you're going to do is you're gonna chop them finely like this, kind of on a diagonal. Almost like you'd be, you know, you'd find them in coleslaw or something. So you're just gonna chop them up a little bit and we're gonna add them to our pile. If you don't want to, you don't have to, um, but I wouldn't dare throw them away. <laughs> so here we go, just chopping them up like this. All right, how's everybody doing? Are your cabbage, is your cabbage done? We're gonna move on to the mushrooms. Right. Very good. And my last bit here. All right, one more. So on to the mushrooms. I will do these later. Um, there are several different opinions about how to clean mushrooms. Some people say, do not wash them. Others say, no problem, wash them. Um, and what I do with shimeji mushrooms is I take a wet paper towel, fresh shimeji, and I just wipe them with the top top like that. I just wipe them off just because. And um, I do wash mushrooms. I don't have any problem doing it. Um, but uh, I'm just going to not make them too wet today. And then for the same thing for white capped mushrooms, I will that. Um, if anybody wants to, they can put in the chat box what kind of mushrooms you're using today. Um, so I have an idea. And then with the shimeji mushrooms, um, they're in this wonderful bunch here. You can just pull them apart like this, okay? And you do want to take off this bottom area. Okay. okay, and we're going to slice the shiitake, but we're just going to pull these apart like that, okay? You can rinse them if you like. I tend not to rinse these mushrooms. And I'm just going to take off this bottom and pull it apart. Okay. And then let's slice up the shiitake. Here, I remove the cap. I'm, I'm sorry, I remove the stem from the cap. And then I'm just gonna slice them don't slice them really, really thin because they will disappear. You know, they'll shrivel up. So I would say it's about a quarter of an inch here, like that. Okay. And I'm going to put that outside. Let's slice our mushrooms. And I've wiped all of these ahead of time. So that's all done. That. Now, if I really want to be multi-nine and not waste, 
I can put these in a little bag and do uh, use them when I next make a uh, soup to flavor flavor the soup. Okay. Is anybody using tofu today? Do I have any vegetarians here? Kyoko Ikiyo-san, you're using tofu? Okay, got it. Um, I'm thinking for you, you using tofu, I'd like you um, just to lightly pan sear your tofu, okay? You're gonna slice it like a steak, you know? So if you've got a big chunk, you're gonna go four pieces, okay? All right, very good. Um, I just don't, I don't want it to fall apart and I think it'll give a little bit more flavor uh, for that. Uh, I'm sure that people can use other fish, but salmon tends to hold its shape when in, in almost all cooking methods. So it's a very often a, um, a um, filet of choice. So here we go, we'll take this off. All right, how's everybody doing? And I think I'll add another mushroom here, a white mushroom. And I took the cap off of, I took the stem off of the cap and just lay it down. Okay. So we are almost ready to put this together. Just let me get rid of my pieces here. All right. I've got the corn. I've got my mushrooms ready. I've got my onions all sliced and I've got my cabbage cut. All right. This is these are your this is your veggie bed. All right. So before we do anything else, we're going to make the sauce and then we'll put it together because once this is all together, um, you really don't have very much to do, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do the edamame, uh, the the spicy edamame, because this just cooks in about 15 minutes. So let me set this aside and let's get the ingredients for the sauce. I like to have everything prepared um, before I start putting it together. It just makes it much easier for all of us. So we need our miso sauce, a miso uh, paste. I'm using white miso today. We have mirin. So if you have your mirin, I have sake, which you can or not use. If you want to use um, wine, you can. If you want not want to use it, you can use water. All right. Um, I also have soy sauce, it's in a container. I try to use low sodium soy sauce here. And one teaspoon of sugar, okay? Everybody have all of their ingredients out there with a bowl. And I like to measure with the class um, because I think it's one of those important elements um, in learning how to measure things correctly. So I've got three, although this is not baking. Baking, I'm far more precise. Uh, in cooking like this, a little bit more, a little bit less uh, is just fine. So we have three tablespoons of miso. Is anybody using other uh, kind of miso than white miso? Anybody using red miso or awase miso, mixed miso? Okay, this is, as I said, it's like a dengaku sauce, um, which is what is very often put on top of vegetables, but dengaku sauce is cooked before you use it. We are not going to cook this sauce first. Okay, just going to put my three tablespoons there. Great. And then I will put in two tablespoons of mirin, but as people who have taken my course before, classes from me before know, 
that I never measure over the bowl. I measure on the side. So if I slip, which I very often do, I haven't ruined something with too much salt or soy sauce. So doing that from the side, two tablespoons of mirin. Okay. And two tablespoons of sake, if you're using warm water. Right. One. Oops. Two. I also try to remind myself to put the tops on things. I cannot tell you how many times I have spilled stuff in a hurry. And then a teaspoon of sugar. All right. And we're gonna mix this all up. Yoshi, do you have the recipe in front of you? Uh, yes, I do actually. You want me to do something up? Soy sauce, I, I forgot to write that down. Is it a... Um, is there soy sauce in there? Teaspoon of soy sauce in that? Can you see? Uh, yeah, one teaspoon of soy sauce right. it's at the okay. very end. Okay. Thank you. One mm -hmm. teaspoon of soy sauce, again, measured to the side. And in. Okay, there we go. Your sauce is done. Just gonna set it over here. Just mix, mix, mix. Try to get those lumps out. Back. All right, we're getting closer. Now, let me cover up. Let me put all my things back. The other important element here is your butter. Two tablespoons is a lot of butter. You do not have to use a lot of butter. I, in general, I use unsalted butter when I, for everything, but certainly when I bake. And for a dish like this, where there's a fair amount of sodium in the miso, um, if you have that, that's fine. Um, and uh, if you have the, only have salted butter, you're okay. Um, you'll just have a little extra salt in your food this time, but it's not going to hurt you and it's certainly not going to taste bad. All right. And the other thing I'm going to do with butter is I'm just going to start, I'm going to just break it up a little bit so that when it comes time to put it on top, it won't be so difficult. All right. So I'm going to cut it like that. So you see a bunch of pieces. Okay, now we are ready to construct the meal. Let me put these aside. Is everybody with me? I don't want to be running off going too quickly. So what you're going to need now is your foil. Let me just get that ready. Um, I will be moving my pan over shortly, but you also need a skillet like this that has, you know, sides. We're gonna be using that. My skillet has a top, um, which is helpful in cooking this. And I am going to put in about an inch of water. You can do that now because the salmon foil packets are going to be sitting enclosed in the water. And this is going to help steam them. It's kind of almost like a bon marie, but um, not exactly. So we're gonna be steaming in the water. And if, yeah, there we go. All right, everyone, it's time to construct. So the dull side, oops, sorry, is going to go up, shiny side down. Okay, just want to get all of my elements around here so that you can see what I'm doing. 
Now, you can use two foil packets and you'll be cooking um, them, uh, cooking separately, or you can use one. Now, a half a pound, I have slightly more here. We cut that in half, okay? Or you can use the full amount um, and just cook it all together, you know, like in one piece like that. So I'm going to separate them, but I will cook them to, uh, together. So what we're gonna do first is put down a bed of cabbage. Remember, if you're gonna do it in two packets, only half the cabbage, all right? If you're gonna do it in one packet, all of the cabbage. So let's put this down like that. And then you wanna take your onions, some onions, and just sprinkle that along the top. It said a half of a medium onion, but don't go too overboard with the onions, I would, I would say. All right, like that. And then you're going to add your mushrooms. Okay, the different ones that you're using. Okay. And I am going to turn on my skillet now so that I start the water uh, getting hot. Oops. Okay. And if you're using corn, you can add some of your corn now. This is such a healthy dish and so colorful. I would say we had a hard time finding a picture for this because it looks really good before you cook it. But after you cook it, it's kind of, <laughs> it doesn't look as, as pretty. So uh, we have that. Okay, this is our bed and we're going to add the salmon now. And I'll, just, I'm, I'll use one right like that okay let me turn it so that it's a little bit more elongated okay and you'll take your miso sauce you may not use all of your miso sauce you know um but i'm gonna put it on top kind of around the vegetables as well okay now, the reason I didn't add any more, also add any salt, I salted the salmon ahead of time. So I just wanted to remind you that there is, you know, there's salt all over the place here. All right. And now take some of your butter and just break it up. Put it on top. Put it on the side. Okay. Like this. I may have to press this down a little bit so that my packet come well from it. That's why I want you to use a large kind of 10 inches, better to go bigger than smaller. Okay, make sure you've got enough miso sauce on there. Okay, can everybody see that? Let me just wipe my hands. Are people making two packets? because <clears throat> we, we get a chance to do this again. Now you're going to bring up the sides like this. Okay. I don't know if you've cooked in foil before. So I'm going to bring up my sides like a tent. And then I'm just going to fold it down like this. Okay. Doesn't have to be pretty. And then I'm going to crunch in the ends here. What we don't want is water to get inside of the packet. Okay. All right. Let me just move my thing so I'm able to move the um, skillet a little bit closer so you can see that. See it cooking? All right, 
So I've got one foil packet ready. Here's my water. You probably should have extra water around because you may need to add to it. And so you've got your foil packet like this and you're gonna add it to the water, all right? Um, if, if you're making a second one, make that now before you put it, do you have a pot that may be large enough for two of them? Okay, if you're doing two, you should have a pot that's large enough for two of them, all right? I'm gonna construct one more. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. Roll flame. And just do it again. Wash, rinse, repeat. The rest of my cabbage goes here. And onions on next. Do this quickly together. And put on the remaining corn, which you do, you can use or not use. The rest of my shiitake mushrooms. And the shimeji. Okay. So, you know, like a lot of things, um, you don't want to overstuff it, although this is going to really reduce when it's cooked, but um, it's harder to manipulate. All right, I'll take my second piece of salmon and put it on top. And and then put the miso sauce on and drizzle it around here. And the butter. And we'll close it up and we'll get it cooking. All right. Everybody with me? All right. Wipe my hands again. And close up our packet. Oops. There we go. And we'll just close this up. I, I'm not sure if you can do this successfully in parchment paper. I bake in parchment paper in the oven, but I have never put parchment paper in water. So you could possibly just do this in parchment paper in the oven. And in that case, you would wrap it up in parchment paper, put it um, in, a, in a pan, in a, in a pan and bake it in the oven. You can do that. All right. So now I am ready to get these cooking. And I will show you my. I've got one packet in. Whoops, over to the side. I'm going to put my other packet in like this. Careful. Okay, so now you can see that both packets are in there. I'm going to drive up my heat a bit. I have water in the bottom, but I want to make sure I have enough. So I'm just going to put in a little bit more, probably about an inch up the side. Okay, and we bring that up to um, a simmer, and then we're going to cover it. I forgot to take my cover out, sorry. So you want a cover for this, all right? Um, let's just get it up to a, a nice um, simmer for now. And then let's cook it like this for about three minutes or so. The bottom is going to start to cook. And then after about three minutes, I'm going to put the cover on. Okay, everybody with me? Excellent. 
All right. Um, I am going to get my handy dandy timer. I forgot to have that out. As people know, this is my favorite piece of jewelry that I hang around my neck. And I'm going to go three minutes. And I'm never without it when I'm cooking because I surely forget what I'm doing. Okay. So is everybody with me? You're all set on this? Before we go on to the edamame, I just wanted to show you something that I made today um, that I'm gonna, another little bonus recipe for you. Um, this is a little basket of fresh vegetables that I have. Um, after this class, I'm going to a Passover Seder. Guess what I'm bringing? John Chanyaki and vegetables. <laughs> so what I have here is uh, a dip, very easy to make. This is just mayonnaise. And all I'm gonna do is add a tablespoon or two of uh, miso, mix it up and you have a fabulous dip, okay? So let me take that, put it in here. And I just wanted to show you um, with Easter tomorrow, Passover today, you can have a very delicious one. You can either use plain miso as I showed you before, or you can just mix up some miso and mayonnaise. This is Cupy mayonnaise because I have it and I really enjoy it. And this is just a very easy dish. You could also, instead of mayonnaise, uh, you could use um, uh, yogurt as well. All right. And that is your holiday dip. Well, that was just a little extra that I wanted to uh, show you today in the basket and how just some colorful vegetables and a very simple dip really um, encourage kids to eat things. Purple cabbage, you know, just a beautiful natural color. Cucumbers, carrots, and regular cabbage. All right, so I'm gonna put this aside. And I will bring my ingredients over for making edamame. Get that ready. Just leave this thing slide over. Is everybody with me? How many minutes do I have left? Eight seconds, everyone. Time to cover your chan chan. All right, done, stop. Okay, so that's gonna cook for a little while. And on a medium low heat, on sort of a medium low, you don't wanna go, it's hard to burn this because you're steaming. So it doesn't, you don't really, you really don't take the risk of burning it, um, but you just don't wanna cook it too quickly. All right, let me wipe this off and we'll do our very simple edamame snack. So here I have my cooked edamame. Does everyone have their edamame with them? I'm assuming um, you can also do this with green beans. It's really just a very delicious, um, uh, a very delicious coating for it. So I've got um, edamame sesame oil, we're going to be cooking. So these edamame are already cooked, pre-cooked. Okay, so if you haven't cooked your edamame, either put them in the microwave or cook them now in a pot of boiling water, but if they're cooked, they're ready for us to season. We are going to um, stir fry them in sesame oil, which is so, so flavorful. And we're going to add our aromatics of ginger and garlic, some scallion, 
And you can either use cayenne pepper. Um, I have some Korean red pepper, gochugaru, which I like quite a lot. Or you can sprinkle on cayenne or ichimi or shichimi, the Japanese peppers. So let's prepare the, I've already chopped up my um, scallions. And now I've got ginger. You can either grate it if you want, or you can just mince it while we're together here. I usually take the flat part of a broad knife and just smash it like that. You can see how it smashes into a mince already. It's almost all done like that. And then just Um, if you like the flavor of ginger, you can use a little bit more. My family is not overly thrilled with it, but I think it's important. So I just use a little bit. And the same thing with garlic cloves. You can use one or two, depending on how much your family. These are huge garlic cloves. It may take a little bit more smashing than I normally do. But again, I smash. And... to mix this finely. All right. Yoshi, can you take a look at the um, recipe for the salmon, the chan chan, and tell me how long it cooks on this second round here with the cover? I left my recipe in my printer. So does it say? Uh, yes, it says, um... Place the lid on the pan and cook for about 10 minutes. Check the water level, add more water as needed, and cook for another five minutes. Remove the, from the pan and place the foil pack on each plate. All right. So 10 minutes initially, and then another five minutes. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, another five minutes from here. Let me. Okay. So now we have everything ready for that. And again, um, like a lot in any, any cuisine, but particularly in Asian cooking and Chinese cooking, you get everything ready ahead of time so that you, because very often the cooking takes a very brief amount of time. All right, so does everybody have your aromatics ready? All set. And I'm now going to move my pan here over to my stove so I can bring my little wok over here. So if you'll all just give me a second to do that, um, I will be right back. All right, so I have my wok ready now here. Everybody can see that. And let me just move things over a little bit. And I think this is calling for, I think it says two tablespoons of um, sesame oil. I'm gonna start with one tablespoon. Does it say two tablespoons, Yoshi, on the edamame? I think, if I'm remembering correctly, two tablespoons. I'm gonna start with one because this is just one cup of, um, one cup of uh, edamame that I have. And I think two tablespoons would overwhelm it. So is that what it says, Yoshi, two tablespoons? It does, yeah, two tablespoons. Okay. We're gonna start off with one, everybody. All right, I'm just gonna clean off my tablespoon. If you're comfortable, you can just pour oil in on your own about how much you would like. But when I cook with a wok, I heat the wok first for about 30 seconds or so just to get the wok hot. And now I'm going to measure my oil off here. Okay. 
and back to the pan. And I've got the oil going in. Okay, and then again, you get the oil hot, give it about 30 seconds or so. It's going into a hot pan. I can always add sesame oil, but it's very hard to take it away. All right, in go the aromatics, which are your ginger and garlic. I'm just going to increase the heat a little bit to a medium high, and your scallions, like that. Oh, that's no good. And you're just going to stir fry this. So now I'm looking at this. It looks a little dry to me. So I'm going to add a little bit more sesame oil. Again, you can always add. It's very hard to take away. So I'm going to add a little bit more sesame oil. And I'm not going to do it over the pan because for sure I'll make a mistake but I want to put a little bit more in there so that it'll be able to coat the... good. And I may end up with the two tablespoons of uh, sesame oil. I'll take a look at how the Ada Mame are doing. Everybody with me? All right. I'm going to check my salmon very quickly, making sure that... It's cooking. Uh, my water has disappeared, so I need to add more water. Everybody check your salmon. All right. And then I think from here, it's a probably another five minutes. All right. In go the edamame. Like that. Oh, that's looking good. Can everybody see? All right, it's smoking, so I'm turning it down. All right. And I am getting a shine on this, but I could use a little bit more sesame oil. So I'll just add a little bit more now. Just a little bit more. So I probably almost used all of it, but I've used it in stages. So you've got everything cooking up nice and crunchy. And I think we just do this for a minute, just to get everything, because the beans, the pods are cooked. Okay. Stir frying is done constantly. Moving your things around. Um, I failed to say before that I had salted the water um, prior to cooking them. Um, and the only thing I'm adding now is just a dash of soy sauce. Okay, just a dash of soy sauce. Lower your heat a little bit. Oh, where did my soy sauce go? Oops. There it is. All right. I'm going to add a dash of soy sauce. Like that. I don't think you're going to need any more salt. And just let that soy sauce cook up a little bit. Like that. And I have a little bit of red pepper. I'm turning off my heat now. Oops, yep, heat off. And I'll just sprinkle on a little bit of red pepper, if you like. All right. You're super delicious. Spicy edamame is done. Yep. I'm beeping, that's five minutes. Um, I would say to turn off your salmon and leave the top on. Just let it steam a little bit. Just turn off your salmon now and leave the top on. Okay. Um, we're gonna go back and check the salmon in a minute. I just wanna take these out to see if we need to cook it more. I'm gonna have you open your packets before we begin with them. And now I'm just gonna take a bowl and 
plate these. Hey, mommy. You can also take a picture of this. Hashtag Ada Mame Champ. Right. Oh my goodness, that looks that looks really delicious. <laughs> I am going to take a picture, <laughs> and then we'll have every we'll do a picture for uh, everybody. Wow, yum! All right, so that is done now, and I'm going to set that aside, and I'm going to put my. Uh, my burner here, move it over a little bit and bring back the salmon so that we can check it out and see if we need to cook it for more time. Okay, put this in the sink. Coming back. All right, everybody. So what I'm gonna do is remove my cover. And I want to make sure that not only the salmon is cooked, but the vegetables are cooked as well. So I'm just going to take a little peek, to see which is the easiest one to open from the top. And the fact that you cook, that you cut everything thinly is, helps it to cook soon. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Looking good. So what I'm doing also is I'm, put my finger down on the salmon. Um, and if it resists, it's kind of, um, it, uh, it feels firm. That shows me that the salmon is ready. And the miso, oh yeah, boy, does that smell good. Um, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna put my cover back on and I'm just going to put the heat on for another minute to cook, make sure my vegetables are cooked. Okay, if you feel your vegetables are cooked, you're all set. But I wanted to make sure mine are really done. All right. Okay. And this is a simple meal. It can be served right in the foil um, on a plate um, with some rice. Let's take out plate like this, okay, and bowl of rice already. I've got my rice cooker going here. And so I'm just gonna take out some rice and you've got your fish and your vegetables and your rice all done kind of in one one place here like that all right we'll just move this here all right so does everybody want to have a taste of one of your edamame while we're waiting see how how that is i'm sure everybody here knows how to eat edamame mm. Wow, delicious. Mm. What do you think? Oh, really good. Mm. Yeah, wow. You can go through a whole bowl of these um, very quickly. All right, so I'm gonna turn off my salmon now and let's get it ready. Out. Oops. Here, so you can see. All right. Careful of your fingers and everything, everyone. Put it on your plate like this. Okay. All right, time to take my finger off. All right, let's open it up. You're going to get an amazing whiff of miso. And oh, my goodness gracious, look at that. Wow. That's looking pretty good. 
Okay. Um, salmon is ready. Let me cut into that for you so you can see. Oops. Just get nice. And let's take a look at that. Oh my goodness. Well, that's about as perfect as salmon gets. Um, the cabbage is cooked. The mushrooms looked cooked. Okay. Maybe could use just a little bit more time on that. But I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. All right. Has everybody got their, um, their plates ready? I'd love to see them. And maybe Yoshi, if we could take a group picture um, for everybody. I'm going to stop my share and I would love to see everybody's. And if you feel that, hopefully you feel things are cooked enough. Let me see. Nice. All right, let's see. Hold your things down. Whoa, nice, Naoko-san. Sophie, let's see your creations, Ikuyo. Oh, so Patsy, are you with us? Woohoo! yay. Hi, Miriam, how did you do? Excellent, excellent, excellent. Kimie-san. Woohoo! Okay. Great. Great, everybody. Sophie, did you use what did you use? Uh, we used cod. We used cod. Okay, that's great. We're from New England here. That's all right. Uh, cod is super. I don't like salmon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be very curious to know what you how the flavors meld together because salmon has got such a distinctive taste. But mm -hmm. cod is goes really well with miso, um, made famous by Chef Nobu, um, his black cod with miso. That's often grilled, okay? Or very often grilled. All right, so if everybody could hold up something and let's take a group picture and then we can taste it. Uh, now you can either eat from the foil packet or you can put things right on the rice like that. Um, but let's take a picture of everybody showing their edamame. All right. Say edamame. Nice. All right. And anybody want to show their fish dish? Noko-san, Miriam, anyone want to show you? Can you put your camera down so we can see your fish? Patsy, let's see. Ikuyo. Wow, nice. A little bit further back. Great. Oh, nice. Look what you guys did. Beautiful. All right. I am going to take a picture and that. Yeah. All right. Super. So if you all can take your pictures of things, you can do hashtag Adamame Champ. And maybe we can all take a bite. As everybody knows, uh, before we eat, put our hands together and we say itadakimasu. Um, and Kancha, thank you for uh, appreciation for the food, people who caught the fish, got the edamame from the field and everything. Um, and so it's just a form of appreciation. All right, does anybody, let's take a taste everyone and then I'll answer any questions. Let's see what you think of the salmon. Oh my goodness. More of a comment. Yes. I, I have never had edamame before you because haven't. I didn't think I would like it. I don't like green beans. So I was like, I don't think I'm gonna like it, but I was snacking on it before we stir fried it. So I should have made more. Yay! <laughs> you have no idea how good that makes a teacher feel. Somebody tries something that they have never eaten before and they like it. Whoa. Oh, that's, it's delicious. That's a big thing. Yay. <laughs> Miriam, you are, you are our edamame champ for the day, for sure. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. So how is your salmon? How is the cod? Sophie, what does the cod taste like? I like it a lot. It's not too, um, it's not too strong. Not too strong. So you find salmon to be a strong fish. 
Yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it, got it. Are the vegetables all cooked, the Oko-san? Doreska? I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Ikuyo-san, Doreska? How's the tofu? You're doing tofu. Tofu, really good. So good. I'm from south of Japan, so uh, chan chan yaki is no, so I never cooked. Oh, okay. So thank you okay. very much for this opportunity. Great. Kimi-san, do desu What do you think? Oishi desu. Oishi. Tofu de yarimashita. Nani? I what? cook with the tofu. Tofu, okay. Did you fry the tofu first? You know what? I forgot. <laughs> That's okay. Is it good? Yes. And did you use a soft or a firm tofu? Firm. Firm. Okay. Patsy, did you finish yours? No. Okay. Sorry. It's still That's okay. <laughs> I just was just was curious to know what anybody thinks. Anyone whose pictures are not up, but anybody else cooked with us today um, to let me know what you think. All right. Well, um, I am impressed that we got through and everybody made their snacks and a meal, white rice. You've got it all in one packet. There shouldn't be too much cleanup going on here. Um, um, my husband really likes this dish because otherwise I use every pot in my kitchen and he hates that. <laughs> so, no, Kasan, I couldn't hear you before. Did you finish it? Did you taste it yet? Um, oh, now you can hear me. Actually, yes. my salmon is thicker. <laughs> so oh, it's still cook cooking a little bit, yes. Okay. Good, good. But it smells well, good, thank you. <laughs> what will happen with a thicker salmon and you cook it longer, but the vegetables will also get softer. So that's, that's totally, totally fine. Okay. So a little plug for our next class um, also would be family friendly. Um, we are going to do teddy bear omo rice. Um, so everybody knows the Japanese um, classic omo rice, which is uh, a chicken rice with ketchup um, <clears throat> mixed together and then a soft omelet over the top. <clears throat> I am not a professional chef that can make that split and it goes all over, but it'll be good. Um, we are also going to do, I see most of the people here are adults. So you may not want to make a teddy bear omunice, but the, om the omelet is a blanket on top of the teddy bear. So we'll do both of them just to make sure that everybody feels like they've, you know, they're getting what they want. Um, but this is a very classic um, type of a Western, um, Western influence uh, dish that has become um, deeply beloved and part of the Japanese um, home cooking repertoire. Does anybody have any questions or comments or anything at all? I have a quick question, Deborah. I haven't worked much with fish personally. Do you have any tips on how to skin salmon and how to skin it easily? Okay, how to skin it easily. I'm glad you asked that. I saved my piece here. I'm going to switch back to my camera for a second so that you can see. You can buy skinned fillets. Uh, let me just share my screen so I can show you. Generally, I buy it with the skin on because that's where the fat is. Um, and so let me. So the skin is usually on like this. Okay. And I had a big piece of salmon. I cut the salmon down the center. All right. Oh, let me find my knife. Just so I can do this. So I cut the salmon down the center like that. And then I just kind of lift up the piece and slowly take my knife like this. And it lifts it up. It's not, you know, some, I just you can cut it and then you can turn it and just carefully 
go like that. It comes up. Let me see if this the mic took it all, all off like that. You can buy skinless, boneless fillets. You can ask the person at the fish counter to do that. A lot of people keep the skin and fry it. Um, very flavorful. Also something that's served in um, izakaya. But that's basically how I do it. The other thing that I do, let me just push it this way, is I'll cut it down the middle. So I still have the skin. On, and then I push like this. Can you see, Patsy, what I'm doing here? I just push Got it. that. Okay. And it comes up. That's kind of one side is easier. Then I've got the other side, and that I have to push here. It's a little messy on your hands, but um, that's what it is, like that. Thank you for that and tip. It would come up pretty, pretty easily like that. And all these little extra bits I'll put on top, you know, to cook, cook with it. Um, and because I'm not going to use this right now, I'm just going to oh. cover it back up and and put it away. Another reason why I don't use this for the dish is that very often there is, even though it's not, it's scaled, I there's still scales, I so I don't want to have that on top of my vegetables. Makes sense. If I was just making a piece of salmon like this and just cooking it in the oven, I would keep the skin on. Okay. So I'm not putting anything underneath it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Debra, a quick question from, from me. Um, yes. Notice that when we made chan chan yaki, basically you made the sauce and put the sauce on the, the salmon and yes. then basically cooked it right afterwards. Does yes. it make any difference if you marinate it for a little longer um, in the refrigerator with the sauce? Or I, I guess it cooks with it when you steam it. So maybe it won't make much of a difference. I don't think it can hurt, you know, like if you can prepare all of this ahead of time or you just put the salmon on the miso on top of the salmon, I'm sure that it would enhance the flavor. That sounds like a good idea. Um, definitely and a great way to do something ahead of time to prepare a bit ahead of time. Okay. Okay, well, it looks like Sophie, you guys are eating up <laughs> one there and Miriam's made my day. She's our Adamame champ of the day. <laughs> Yay. We do this with kids. So it's such a, um, a gratifying thing to do. People don't usually, kids don't know where their food comes from, you know, and very often they see just the bean and not the pod. So that's also one of the reasons why we go through all this teaching. So Yoshi, any other comments or anything? No, else? well, thank you very much. And let's give uh, Chef Deborah Sensei a round of a virtual round of applause. Thank you so much. That was so wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Arigato, sensei. And gochiso samadishta, of course, at the end of the meal. Gochiso samadishta. And um, I hope to see you all next week. Hi, Joe. And um, our summer class, I think we're going to give a try to make um, cream anmitsu, ice cream anmitsu with ice cream and mochi balls and uh, azuki beans and a really fruit and a really wonderfully um, healthy dessert. So yeah, well, okay, definitely everyone. Everybody. To Happy me. And we'll send out an email about uh, the next one, the teddy bear omuraisu and Anmitsu and all the other ones coming up too. So thank you again, everyone. And happy Easter. Happy Easter. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.